Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. And welcome to Knuckleheads of Liberty, formerly the uh, Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. We are coming at you on January 8th of 2021. And oh, what a day, what a week it has been. <laughs> but mm-hmm. before we get into any of that, mm-hmm. uh, let's uh, introduce you to our panelists. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty, retired engineer from the state of California. Up in our right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. That's a knucklehead right there. That's a knucklehead (laughs) engine from Harley Davidson. And that's the type of knuckleheads we are. We're, we're, it's a really good engine that Harley Davidson made in the thirties. And so there you have it. Tim desperately does not want you to confuse us with the knuckleheads in Washington. <laughs> uh, 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 Tim is Boy, a, howdy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, Tim is a pilot in the state of California. And not, for, did, not for not oh, for yeah, the not state. for just in, in. in the state. I don't work for the government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unlike, <laughs> un, unlike some people who retired from the government. <laughs> no. yes, yes, yeah. yes, with that. Yeah, I, I don't know how he even looks at himself in the morning. And- <laughs> <laughs> well, we it's can't all problem. be retired. It's very, it's very <laughs> problem. It's very problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. And uh, if we can't contain ourselves with laughter, it's because of <laughs> the kind of week we're having coming out of 2020. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if we're going to be talking a lot about Trump, let's just put it that way. <laughs> so so well, we've, been, uh, we've been warning them that this this whole government thing has just gone crazy uh, off the rocker. And so, uh, you know, the, the funny thing is they think it's just the person. It's the wrong person in there. We'll wait till we get our guy in there. We'll be fine. Nah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, it's just one of those uh, things, you know, where, uh, you know, you have to, <laughs> as if there is a right person. You know, uh, it, yeah. one thing for sure, there definitely are a lot of wrong people. <laughs> we, we see them every uh, day and every mm-hmm. year coming through there. And uh, uh, this is going to be a, a good wrap up on some of that. But uh, so I think something attracts them, uh, you know, like. Uh, like flies are attracted to certain aromatic <laughs> mixtures that come out of uh, the, the the bodies of animals and and people. Yeah, and so it's it similar to that. Gives a new uh, a new meaning to the concentrated uh, <laughs> concentrated interests there. Yeah. Yeah. Concentrated aromas coming out of Washington. Aroma, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I'm not attracted to that whole thing. Thank you. Speaking of something that smells like an awful mess that you probably wouldn't want to step in. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about the Georgia uh, Senate runoff results. Uh, and uh, there's certainly a lot to get into, but uh, that's uh, that's kind of the spark to the whole week. So <laughs> let's just start there. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. So the... Well, uh, um, yeah, so so now it looks as though the Democrats have a uh, majority and they have uh, the Senate, the House and, and the presidency. So uh, our our libertarian wet dream, which is uh, stymied uh, <laughs> government with uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, what's the word? Gridlock. 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 Yes. Gridlock. Yes. Divided, or we, divided government. Yes. Well, we, we don't get that wish for 2021. So, um, you know, we'll we'll have to see what happens. I guess it's going to be this way for the next two years, 21 uh, and 22. And then, right. Is that yes. it? At, at okay. least because we're, we're going to have the midterms in 2022. Yeah. Okay, 2022. <laughs> so, okay. So we uh, we have a, a, that to um, to look forward to to reinstate gridlock 
which is what we love. We love it. And I love yeah. it. I mean, I know yeah. you guys have talked about loving it and yeah, um, of course. see, you know, because only it, it, it's uh, unlike the status of the world who believe that all problems are best uh, solved by government uh, interaction or interaction. Uh, we uh, libertarians uh, believe in the, the free market as the best solution for our issues and problems and sure, government sure. just kind of mucks that all up anyway. They, they always do. They always do. Yeah. So, so what do you think about the, are we doomed? Well, am I going to have to, am I have to going to have to hide my guns from the, the gun grabbing uh, Democrats this well, year? You might, you know, some, some of the, some of the proposals are, Mind boggling to say the least. I mean, yes. Beto, Rock, Beto Rock said they were coming for your gun, so you know, you got to be careful. You know, just, okay. just to be clear, the, the Democrats do not have a majority in the Senate per se, but Kamala Harris, as the president of the Senate, could break ties on, on, certain, on uh, certain legislation and probably for the appointment of judges and cabinet appointments and that kind of stuff. Leon, don't you think that she's going to be true to her word, that it's all about unity and she's going to try and get along with everybody? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I am, I am sure. I am sure Kamala is not reading Rodney King's words. Can't we all get along? I'm sure, I'm sure she is. I'm sure she is. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, um, the loss of both seats in Georgia was quite a surprise, quite frankly. In the sense that, I mean, true, traditionally, Georgia have been a, a, a red state, probably even, some people will even say ruby red. And over the years, they've been trending a little bit blue because, um, because of the influx in, into Atlanta. Um, uh, Atlanta being, is, um, in, is totally blue now with, with a large influx of, of blacks into, into Atlanta. It's, uh, it has become something of a quite a quite a, a re-energizing of that city over, over the years, over the last 20 years, this is what has happened. But I am not sure, I mean, I, I have, I'm not heard of anything about, say, fraud that have occurred on this, on this election in the runoff. I haven't heard anything about fraud. There are a few things that look a little suspicious, but there's nothing that I can say that I can point to that, like, the, like in the general election. So that was kind of surprising that they won both seats. I thought at least at least the Republicans would have held one. I, I, I thought so, because um David Perdue did beat Ossoff in the in the general election. He just didn't get the 50% that would have avoided the runoff. He didn't get it. But he did beat Ossoff. And so it was kind of a little surprising that in the runoff he, he, um, he didn't do the same thing. So there we have it. 50-50 Senate. With Kamala to break, you no, know, can't we all get along? Kamala yeah. is not going to break all ties and make and make and, and sure the Democrat agenda is going to move forward. We do um, have a little bit of a. There are a couple of conservative Democrats who have said that they're not going to go along with all of the craziness, the socialism that the Democrats are, are proposing. Um, so that is the only great luck we can hope for. Is the conservative. When I say we, I guess uh, we on the right, or at least we who are against um, this this socialist yeah. trend that we are seeing in the United States. That's the only that's the only um, uh, good luck we have right now. <laughs> Some conservative Democrats, I think there are about two or three of them. One of them is from West Virginia, the senator from West Virginia, whose name I can't remember right now. So yeah, that's all we can look for now. So, Leon, a uh, question for you. Uh, you keep up on this way better than I do, and I appreciate that. And so I have a question for you. Has anyone in the Democratic side uh, celebrated such a huge mandate with these extremely close elections, you know, 50-50 essentially, and 51-49 or whatever, you know? I mean, so so the, they did take the Senate, but just barely. I mean, so... Yes. It's obviously not a mandate, so I'm being uh, just being, uh, you know, silly here. But uh, has anybody came, come out as you know because they they like to 
you know, if it's black, they say white. If it's blue, they say red. I mean, well, that's a bad analogy, but um, have they said anything about this so-called mandate that's not a mandate? Yes, yes, they have. If you look at um, <laughs> Bernie, Bernie Sanders, the, oh. the real socialist, well, yeah. he, he never hid his, his, um, his socialist intent. He's from Vermont. He have come out and said, we have to go aggressively are these items that they want to to, yeah. um, to institute. And all of it is a bunch of socialist garbage. But he said, we got to go hard because the voters put us here to, well, he, he's talking in the name, of course, talking in the name of the American people now. I don't know which American people he's talking about because most of us are not socialists. But um, he, he's talking about them going very hard. And some of it is going to be done by executive action by, uh, by Joe Biden and on and on he's going. So the answer to your question is yes. They are out there talking. Maybe they have not used the word mandate. I don't think I've heard them actually use the word mandate. <clears throat> mandate, But everything they have said is like they do have a mandate. Hmm. Well, even though that's just a 51% mandate. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> All well, right. <clears throat> well, after this, uh, uh, some of the craziness that's gone on here, they might feel like they have a mandate <laughs> this week uh, um, when you were talking earlier about uh, it was kind of odd that they won you know since seeing as how both uh, I, I think both uh, Loeffler and Purdue had uh, had uh, done better than their opponents in the uh, in the original uh, yeah. election but then they both lost in this runoff yeah. and you know the issues with well how did they lose well let's uh, <laughs> let's examine what happens in the last uh, a uh, month or so since the original election, and you know it's funny. The uh, right after the um, the election, uh, they they've been wrangling over the amount of the stimulus checks, and the Republicans did a heck of a lot to uh, try to put a cap on how much you know free money that w the government was going to be given out on this, and they they had essentially thought they did a great job by getting it to $600 while the Democrats wanted 2000 And after they signed this deal, uh, my understanding is I think Purdue was even starting to run commercials in Georgia saying what a great job they did. And then suddenly Trump comes on the scene and says, what a terrible deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this should be $2,000. He, he originally threatened to veto, to veto the, um, the, the, yes. the, the package that came before him. Exactly. Yeah he, to do it. yeah, he came out and he trashed the deal, saying what a terrible job they did on yeah. it after the Republicans had started their victory dance on it. And then the Democrats said, yeah, you know, $2,000 is a great idea. <laughs> I said, Why don't we do this? And then uh, Trump then folded, but he still said this is a terrible deal. But, you know, uh, we'll look at it later. And then the Democrats eventually folded. And then the Democrats started campaigning in Georgia on, hey, if you elect us, we will give you your $2,000. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joe Biden came there uh, yeah. saying, hey, look, if, 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 if you guys do this, we will give you your $2,000. All you have to do is elect our guys. Uh, you know, talk about quid pro quo. <laughs> quid pro quo, <laughs> Joe, <Yeah>. I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> elect me, and I will give you a check for $2,000. <laughs> So oh their message, God, Jason, their oh. message went a little bit further. After the um, after the whole thing by Trump, the message that the Democrats had was that it is those nasty Republicans who are only giving you six hundred. We're gonna give you two thousand. Yeah. Okay, so they they totally, even though most of them voted for the six hundred, <laughs> the six hundred dollars, yeah. they were saying it was those nasty Republicans who who was giving you six hundred dollars. Who, yep. who's looking at your suffering and only giving you $600. That was the message. And well, Trump put that by, by um, you know, by after, after signing the trash in it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, I'm going to make a prediction here since we're talking okay. all this money stuff is that uh, here's my prediction. By the end of 2021, bread will be $200 a loaf. Okay, that's my <laughs> prediction. <laughs> bread, bread, the kind of, you pay uh, what, like 10 bucks for now, it'll be $200 a loaf by the end of the year. What, you, the you know what year? Do you know how much inflation that will require, Tim? Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much inflation? I don't know. No, how much? 
A hell of a lot. A hell of a lot. Okay. <laughs> well, right. you, you know what's very surprising about that is Bitcoin hit forty thousand dollars today. A Bitcoin wow. and gold and silver, oh. for some reason, odd reason, aren't really yeah. aren't really following that trend. They're just yeah. sort of fluttering around. In fact, today I think they dropped a few percent. Uh, I think four or five percent, maybe. So. It's kind of odd times, uh, in a different world, I guess, that we're living in. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah. You know, now I'm starting to get worried now that Leon asked that very appropriate question. Um, maybe I should adjust that down <clears throat> to $100 a loaf. And... <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, that's my prediction. By the end of 2021, that would be December 31st, it'll be... A hundred dollars a low. There we go. <laughs> so, even though, even though it's better, it's still a lot of inflation. It's we still a lot. About. I know. I know. <laughs> well, and, and of course, yeah, you know what the government's answer to that will be. If go, if the bread shoots up oh. with inflation to a hundred dollars a loaf. Well, we just need to give people more money to go buy more bread. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know? Either, I was thinking, I, I was thinking you could go two ways. That's one way you could go. We could also go. Well, we need price controls on these yeah, uh, price well, gouging. That's true. Uh, yes. uh, Safeway and and uh, Vons and all those markets. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, getting back to the 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 whole craziness of the election, though, and tracing this whole thing. Um, you know, the the other thing was, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of issue, and you talked about potential voter fraud. Well, that's all that's been being talked about since the last election. Not to say there wasn't potentially any voter fraud. I mean, certainly some things look pretty suspicious in Georgia that last time around with the yeah. votes coming out from under the table, but Trump wouldn't stop talking about it. While, you know, the, the, the biggest thing on the agenda was those two senators in Georgia and he, all he could talk about was how everybody was stealing the election from him. And it's just, uh, so, I mean, he literally can, you know, he, it's funny. That's how he got to be president or at least got the Republican nomination. He sucked the oxygen out of the room from all the other Republicans. And that's what apparently happened here with the Senate too. He sucked all the <laughs> oxygen away from these two Republican senators who were running. And well, may guess, maybe the Democrats uh, ought to rethink their uh, attitude toward Trump. Maybe Trump is the best thing that ever happened to the Democratic Party. You might be right about that. Yeah. Even now, though... Even though I am, even though I am in the camp that believes that this election was stolen from Donald Trump, I am in that camp. I firmly yeah. believe yeah. that. But I am not. I am. I am against all forms of lawlessness involved with that. Okay. Yeah. But I am in the camp who believe that there was enough fraud to change it, the outcome of this election. There are too many suspicious things. But go ahead, Jason. I'm sorry. Speaking I'm of sorry. lawlessness, we can't possibly miss that on this show. <laughs> lawlessness. So we get down to the end, and we're talking about, uh, you know, about let's, uh, you know, make sure that the election is legit. And, and so the last straw becomes essentially asking Pence to count the votes in a way yeah. that, the constitution doesn't allow him to count it and yeah. i mean we've you know just watching the wheels completely come off the train you know on this this whole thing and uh um and and we saw it all come to a head when on wednesday when they were spoke when trump or when pence was supposed to count the vote pence was literally uh saying i don't have that power and trump was saying um Pence does have that power, and he's going to count them the way I want him to count them. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, he 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 kind of uh, you know there was a big rally in uh, in uh, Washington D.C. this last yeah. Wednesday, and Trump, you know, uh, kind of just kept going on about how the election was stolen, and his supporters went down to protest at the Capitol. It got out of hand, and eventually there was a guy in a Viking hat sitting where Mike Pence was supposed to be sitting, <laughs> counting votes in the end. So I don't know quite how we got from A to B, but um, this we is did. kind of how Trump's presidency looks like it's going to come to a conclusion. <laughs> you know, you know, the craziest thing, thing is the guy is, in the Viking hat wasn't Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing that is so sad about all of this, okay, that is truly sad. I think Donald Trump, as much as this man does drive me crazy, and he had been driving me crazy for well since since he came down the elevator to to seek the, the nomination for the Republicans. 
And you know, you, you know my strong views about him, Jason. But I still think this man accomplished quite a lot in four years. He really did, including Operation Warp Speed. <coughs> but all of that now, because of his misstep on, the, on, on Wednesday, all of that now is in tatters and totally being destroyed because of his missteps. He really made a big mistake, a big blunder. I mean, he was telling Mike Pence to do something that is totally unconstitutional. He was saying that Mike Pence could unilaterally reject the certification of votes by, by, by the, the, the several states, which Mike Pence has no authority to. Okay? It is true. I believe there was significant voter fraud in, 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 the, um, in the election. But the votes were certified, whether we like it or not. And I don't like it. But they were certified by the states. Mike Pence have no authority to reject it. Now it could have been rejected if some of the if the um the senators and the and the House of Representatives had rejected them individually. It could have been rejected. But Mike Pence by himself cannot do that. But there was Trump, you're right, out there telling the thing. Pence have to have the courage to do this. Pence have to do this. Blah blah blah. I mean, you know, there. I mean, okay, most of, well. Trump was having a most will peaceful protest, okay? He really was, okay? A most will peaceful protest. But there are some unhinged people that hang around his his, his, uh, his, um, his, his rallies. Here we have the outcome. Worse yet, to, to make matters worse out of all this, Rudy Giuliani, who most times I think does do good, uh, sometimes he has do some horrible things. On that very day, he was addressing the crowd what does he say? We have to have trial by combat. Come on. How do you think those unhinged people are going to interpret that? I hadn't even heard that one. <laughs> wow. No, he did. He said it. Trial by combat. We need that. Oh. Now the next day he said he, the next day he said somewhere on some interview, or oh, he was joking or some kind of stuff and things like that. But you don't say, you don't say that to, to I don't know, there were probably 200,000 people there. Even if just one percent or half of one percent of them are unhinged, what do you think the outcome outcome is going to be? Did, did he uh, did, <clears throat> did he want Trump and uh, and uh, uh, Biden to go at it in a ring with boxing gloves or maybe I guess <laughs> I guess <laughs> no no you're supposed to be go out behind the barn where uh, Biden wanted to Biden take wanted Trump. to take the <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He did mention that. Well, it looks like it looks like at least two people want to have a, a trial by combat: Giuliani and Biden. <laughs> you know, the, the 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 sad thing about all this is is that, um, you know, it, like, like Leon was saying, I mean, there's some things that Trump did, uh, you know, and we'll have a show where we go into sort of a post mortem on Trump, but you know, there's some things he did that. Uh, you know, he he stood in the face of some craziness, but he he yes. also kind of brought a bag of craziness of his own. Oh my God. <laughs> true, true. He's ending, he's ending, he's ending his presidency, a presidency which I think accomplished quite a bit. He's ending his presidency with all that baggage and all that craziness that he that he, you could you could imagine, and this should not have ended this way for Donald Trump, even what? if even if they said the election is lost. Fine, we don't like it. We have to. I voted for him. Okay, I voted for him. All right, but I still not. I I didn't vote for this. Oh God, I, I almost let it out. I almost <laughs> let it out. <laughs> I did not vote. Let me let me be mad. I did not vote for this craziness that I saw on Wednesday. I didn't vote for that. Okay, yeah. I what wrote. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I I just wanted to put in <laughs> one point too about the whole. Uh, um, uh, riots as well too. I mean, because you know this is being characterized as a riot, and you know, and, and it pretty much was a riot at the Capitol. But you know, it's 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 it is very funny that the left is absolutely apoplectic now about riots. And yeah. I mean, we yeah. watched the whole year of them saying that, you know, uh, uh, you know, who says that protesters, you know, can't get can't get a little bit, you know, uh, break the law and get a little bit out of control. You know, that's exactly yeah. what CNN's been telling us this whole time. And yeah, and, uh, how, how else are they going yeah. to be heard? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, and, 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 you know, the, the, the crazy thing is as well, you know, I, I think, you know, bo both cases, you know, you get violent. That's, that's a terrible thing, but you know, there is something about, you know, as far as from a libertarian perspective, if, 
government is doing something that's getting out of out of control and you're going to rage against government at least you know if it's focused against government i'm not saying it's necessarily right but certainly we've seen governments where it could be potentially right. I mean, obviously, you can get all the way to a spectrum where government is, is authorizing slavery. And, you know, I don't think anybody would say, you know, you wouldn't be justified in, in uh, going against that. But, but yeah. the, the, the main thing is, is that these protesters were focused against government and not just attacking random strangers, which is what we've seen this whole last year is just people yeah. being upset and just attacking their neighbors and burning their neighbors' stores down. So, you know, at least that's the one silver lining of this whole riot. But, um, it but you is, know what, Jason? But you know what? What? What we have we cannot um, help but mention is the is the sheer hypocrisy that is ongoing. Okay, all through the summer they were telling us most would peaceful protest. We were watching the lawlessness and the criminal conduct, and they were telling us mostly peaceful protest. What were we seeing on Wednesday? Was it any different? Was it any different? They were attacking our institutions yep. all summer. Yep. Was it any different yep. from what happened on Wednesday? Well, but nobody was saying no, it was a mostly peaceful protest from Wednesday. Oh, this is an inter insurrection. Oh my yeah. God, look at what they're doing. Oh my God, this is horrible. We have never seen this since 1814 when they um, went during the Spanish American War, whatever, whatever it was. Oh my God, look at it. Yeah. Well, well, but we, I... watch, we watch all summer and nobody complained. I, I, I noted. I think I noted two differences between what happened Wednesday and the the past. Uh, but I have to ask the question, were any statu statues toppled <laughs> on Wednesday? And that, was, okay. that was the safest riot for statues ever. <laughs> and number 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 two question is were any buildings set on fire? Does, if, if you can say no to both those questions, then it was quite a bit different than the riots previous yeah. in the True. year. Yeah. Valid point. Valid point. <laughs> Valid point. <laughs> well, you know, this is this has just been, uh, you know, the kind of the wrap up to a really terrible mm -hmm. election year. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of yes. where we wound up, but. Uh, um, you know, we didn't make it to our knucklehead noise patrol and there was something I actually wanted to uh, jump in with that on Trump as well. But we will save that for a, our postmortem show, hey, I guess. On Trump. I got an idea. <laughs> Do that on the very first part of the next show so people will want to watch the next one for the knucklehead noise patrol. <laughs> well, bookend knucklehead noise patrol. We there will we take go. that under consideration. And speaking yeah. of the next show. Please tune in for our next shows. We can find our shows at libertariancounterpoint.com. And uh, you can also uh, catch us on public access in Sacramento on Mondays and uh, Facebook, libertariancounterpoint.com as well. And leave your comments or questions at knuckleheads at libertariancounterpoint.com. We'll see you at the next one. Thanks so yes. much. See you then. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.